Okay, so let's have a chat about uh, capital gain stacks. This is an interesting one. So I think begin by just sharing with the listeners. Again, I know we touched on it last time, but we didn't have time to get into it really. Um, so share with the listeners again just quickly what is capital gains tax what's the reasoning behind it why does the government want a portion of your capital gains oh so that they can make money um no capital gains tax is a tax on capital items a, tax, a capital item is usually employed to make um, taxable income that can be property it can be motor vehicles it can be uh, furniture it's anything that you're going to use for a long period of time um, to make taxable income with. So that item itself might not um, directly be um, bring you income, but it's an income generator. Okay, and then they, so, so explain the, the dynamic on when you will have to start paying capital gains tax and how they actually calculate your capital gains, how it is it's calculated, the inclusion rate and those kind of things. Um, because I, I think most people or a lot of people think that if they buy a house, a second property, a townhouse or whatever for 500,000 Rand and then three years later they sell it for 700,000 Rand, they're going to pay tax on 200,000 Rand. And that's not quite how it works. So if you can cal uh, explain a little bit about that, gets, uh, how that calculation gets done. Okay, so capital gains tax, it's not a separate tax. It falls within the umbrella of income tax. You only disclose it to SARS once a year when you do your income tax return. So every time that you buy, uh, buy and sell a capital good, you don't have to disclose it to SARS. When it comes to property, um, you have to give uh, your income tax reference number. That's so that SARS can keep record of it. Um, specifically, when it comes to property, there is a distinguished between a primary residence and a non-primary resident and each individual in South Africa is only allowed to have one primary residence. Mm. So that is your basic um, uh, residence, where you stay, it's yes. where you uh, sleep and live um, and everybody is only allowed one. So there's a little bit more um, uh, uh, space to move when it comes to primary residence. You get a 2 million rebate when you sell it. So if you sell it for under 2 million, it's not even something to think about. Okay. Um, so not two million profit or capital gain, two million value done. Yeah, two million value, you don't have to have sleepless nights over it. Um, if you do sell it for over two million, um, it doesn't mean you 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 better pay that capital gains tax on it. Um, it's just then you need to start thinking about this. Okay. Okay, that falls away when you let's say for instance you buy a property for investment purposes or for a holiday home. Um, then that primary rebate falls away. Okay. So how the, there's three um, terms that needs to be considered when it comes to capital gains tax. It's your proceed. That's the amount that you receive for it. Okay. Your base cost, for all intents of purposes, is, is, to simplify it, it's the cost that you paid for that item. Yes. And okay. then it's your capital gain. Okay, so you take your proceed, the amount that you've received for it, less your base cost, which is your um, cost price, then you get your capital gain. Okay. Then you deduct your annual exclusions. For primary residence, it's two million, and for all other capital items, it's forty thousand per year. Okay. So I've got an example here. Does that? Sorry, I'm interrupting, but does that accumulate? Or, uh, I, I don't think it does. Uh, they're 40,000. So if I don't use the 40,000 for a capital gain this year, I can't use 80 next year. No, okay. No. Oh, just checking. 40, I tried. Just checking. Okay. 40,000 per year. And also, when it comes to primary residence, if you are married in community of property and um, if you and your wife does not each get two million, um, it's a million per primary residence. So that's split into oh, two. Okay. Each get a million. Um, a rebate on that or exclusion on that. So let's say, for instance, you have a capital item, you uh, sell it for 200,000 and it costed you 100,000 rands. Yes. Um, your capital gain on that will be 100,000 rands. Uh, then you apply your um, annual ex exclusion. Let's assume this is not a primary resident. Um, then you get a 40,000 rands annual exclusion, uh, which means your capital, your taxable capital gains only is 60,000. Then there's an inclusion rate, okay. which means only 40% of your tax of, of your capital gain is taxable. In this example we just had, it's 24,000 rand, which will be included in your taxable income. 
Okay, so and that just gets added to the top of all the other income you have. If you're earning 400,000 Rand from your job, you'll just add that 24 and then it will be at whatever your rate of tax is that you will pay tax on that. That's correct. And your capital gains is aggregate. It means that SARS takes all of your capital gains that you made during the year, add it together, apply the one uh, exclusion. Um, you don't get exclusion per capital item. You only get one annual exclusion. And um, it's possible that you can make a capital loss. In the event of a capital loss, you cannot offset it against other income um, uh, or taxable income. You can only uh, roll it over to the next year to offset it against future capital, capital gains. gains. And how long can you um, roll that into the future, that capital loss? Until you make a profit. Until you make a profit. Okay, so if you make a capital loss on an item, um, you can indefinitely keep that loss as an asset going forward, a tax asset going forward. Yeah, you cannot unfortunately deduct it against um, normal, income. normal income. Okay.